And we're back here on the Stogie Geek Show. want to remind everyone to visit our website, www.stogiegeeks.com, for all the latest reviews. Uh, audio versions of the show, video versions of the show can all be found on the website, uh, as well as the, uh, the wonderful Stogie's feed where we tag everything that, <clears throat> that we've been smoking. Almost everything that we've smoked, and uh, we give it our Stogie Geeks patented trademark rating system of uh, the, uh, well, it's one through five, but there's also a two and a half thrown in there, too. So you can check out more information about the rating system uh, and all the stuff that we've been smoking organized uh, by rating. So if you want to see everything that is the most highly rated cigars on our site, you go to our site, you click where it says the Oasis, and you get the listing. I didn't actually rate any cigars I smoked this past week as an Oasis. Did you, Tim? I did not. Nope. And uh, we also didn't pick our Stokes, uh, Smokes of the Week. Mine was the Ramon Alione, specially selected. I put that in my notes in there. That was my Smoke of the Week. How about you, Tim? I'm going to go with the Day Deuce, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I smoked three of those, like I said, in the last two days, and I'm going to have a hard time putting the rest of them down. I'm going to have to try one of those. I have yet, yet to try one. Real? I'll, br- I'll bring you one, dude. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Remind me, though. I'm not coming down for another two weeks, so. No problem. Yeah, I think we're going to skip uh, recording next week just as a program note as I am on vacation. Are you? Good for yes, you, man. Yes, much needed vacation. Uh, let's see. Tim, so where are we going with this segment that I am very ill prepared for? <laughs> you and I both, dude. Um, so we're going to talk about recent releases at the IPCPR and what we're looking forward to. Um, I have certainly have a few on my list. Um, if you want, I can start. Sure. Um, first one I received today, actually, it's the PG Symphony 20 Bombones Extra. Uh, received a couple from Stogie Santa today in the mail. I uh, haven't smoked them yet. I'm really looking forward to it. Although I have to agree with Mark Jr., that is a small, small smoke for $8 and change, dude. What size um, is it, roughly? Uh, I believe it is three and three quarters by 52. Wow. I mean, it is tiny. Um, I mean, we love the Symphony 20. Everybody mm. knows we do. Um, so I was really looking forward to a short one. But for the price point, I do have my doubts. Um, we'll see what happens. Next show, I'm going to talk about it, if, if I don't throw out a formal review before that time. Um, now, you smoked the belly, correct, Paul? I did, and I reviewed it on the last show. Yep. Just to... Uh, <sighs> Go back. What do you think? Uh, I'd go with the Salomon at this point. Okay. Mm, yeah. Out of everything in that line. You love the Salomon. I know oh, yeah, that. buy boxes of them. Yeah. <laughs> it is very good. I mean, it's $18, but you, you get a lot of smoking I think time compares, and experience. I think yeah. it compares with the Padron. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, the, Absolutely. the premium lines. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Ooh. Um, one of the ones I'm looking forward to, Tim, is uh, the Tatawahe Avion 12. Okay. Uh, I'm told these. There were some adjustments. There's not. Well, they're not in the shop yet. The local shop here. I think. Uh, I think Stogie Santa said he had some samples that he brought back with him. Unfortunately, n- neither Stogie Santa or nor Paul, Paul Joy, who were both kind of scheduled to be on this show, um, Stogie Santa dropped out first. Because he was sick. And then Mr. Paul Joyle, the, one of the sponsors uh, for the show, uh, the owner of the local shop here, um, he was supposed to come on because he had, they both attended IPCPR together, but now he's fallen ill from, like, the same illness. So I heard one that's of the cigar what? companies brought a pig to the convention, and people got swine flu. The swine that's, flu, that's yeah. What yeah. <laughs> it could it's be what we call, in the security community, it's what we call con flu. It's that's what right. happens when you drink 12 to 15 drinks a night. <laughs> and, and, stay out till, <laughs> and stay out till 4 in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Around, you know, like, thousands of other people. Thousands of other people, airports, you name it, you know. Um, yeah, get well, guys. I mean, that's I've been there. It blows. Definitely. Nope. Yeah. I somehow escaped it from the conference that I went to somehow. I'm but, not yeah, sure. Dude. But I've heard that the Avion, the, the next release, is, it, it has some adjustments. Uh, am, I, am I correct on that? Ecuadorian Habano Maduro, uh, Nicaraguan binder, and Nicaraguan uh, filler, including Jalapa and Estali. Yeah. I heard they were working on the band, though. That was, that was, that was the band like that. is friggin' ugly. We've yeah. said that before. Now, the picture I'm seeing, uh, I'm getting this from cigarcoop.com, uh, uh, cigar-coop.com. Uh, the band it, is still ugly. Uh, the same band, and it's ugly. It's the same band. Is it Coop or is it Co-op? I'm really confused it's about Coop. that. It's Coop. I'd say Coop. I, like, I would, too, but... Like a chicken coop, except cigars. 
exactly. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I was on the right track. I heard, I heard somebody refer to it as co-op, but... Yeah. I, I now, sure. along the Tatawahe um, line, there is a new old man in the sea. Yep. Like, just the letter C. Um, I'm curious to see if that's the same the same stuff. Is that the same blend or different as last year? I'm not sure. So, the, so the single in it is actually the black blend, yeah. from what I understand. And last year, that was not the case. I believe it was the... Not the Rekazer, it was the Triumphador. Is that correct? No, there was a, bla- a black la- Lancero. Oh, I thought it was the Triumphador Reserva. No, it was a, a Lancero, a black Lancero, in yeah, okay. last year's. So as well, it looks like this year's, too. So I guess we'll see then. Yeah. Um, I thought it was different, but maybe it's not. Mm. Um, one thing I am very well interested in, though, that Pete Johnson blended from my father's cigar is the Duena. Yeah, the La Duena. And from what I understand, from what I've read um, on Cigar Coop, um, is it's based off of the La Crisot. Casita Criollo. Thank you. Yes. Um, which was 100% Connecticut Broadleaf. Yes. However, they've added a little bit of Nicaraguan to the binder and filler. I saw that, yeah. So the wrapper's Connecticut Broadleaf and the binder and filler are a mixture of Connecticut Broadleaf and Nicaraguan. I'm very interested in this smoke. Me too. Uh, this is probably... Nice presentation. What I've seen on reviews thus far, very good. So uh, the original story was uh, Jenny Garcia, the yep. daughter of Don Pepin Garcia, yep. um, who just looks like an incredibly classy lady. And actually, Stokey Santa smoked one of these cigars with her at IPCPR and said the same thing. She's just like totally down to earth person. Very, very nice. Um, very I, beautiful too. Very beautiful. Yes, extremely beautiful. <laughs> and uh, so what, Stokey, what, what I was reading before was that uh, her and Pete Johnson, I believe, were talking. And she wanted a, a cigar blended that uh, was a little bit more mild, like wasn't as full-bodied, uh, something a little more smokable. And uh, that's where they came up with this blend. So, Because I, I like that style cigar uh, that's really not... I mean, I do, like late at night, if I, I come on the workshop and I want to have a glass of scotch and relax... Uh, like 10 o'clock or, or later, I reach for a small, like super powerful cigar. Most of the other times when I smoke, I like a more um, medium bodied, um, not so much, sp- a little bit of spice, but not so much in your face kind of cigar. And that's what they're describing this profile to be. Uh, and I really, really am looking forward to this one. Uh, we packaged in boxes of 21. And I did like the La Casita Criollo, but. That full Connecticut Broadleaf just did not present enough complex flavor. I mean, to say it's one-dimensional is an understatement. Also, there was a lot of construction problems with that particular blend. So, well, yeah, the, the problem with Connecticut Broadleaf is it soaks up humidity. So it, it's, it's very difficult to burn that smoke right. I mean, it's ugly as sin. It's delicious, but ugly as sin, too. Yeah. I mean... Um, so I think adding Nicaragua to the, specifically to the binder too, yeah, is really going to improve the performance and the flavor profile. Yeah, I think it's going to be and, a huge win. And I like the fact that it's a lot of small vitolas. We have a robusto. Me which too. I yes, the size. Believe are, the robusto is the largest of all of them. So they've got a robusto, a bellicoso, a petite lancero, petite bellicoso, and petite robusto. That's awesome. Awesome. I can't wait. If what I, what I, what I was told from Stokey Santa, we're talking about three to four weeks, so this should be coming real soon. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to smoking that. Probably tops on my list. Uh, what else do I got? Uh, well, one that Stokey Santa teased us with today, and uh, yes, SMS us. Um, the where is it? The Headley Grange mm. by Crown Heads. Current has so, being of the, the Four Kicks fame. Correct. Uh, I really like the Four Kicks from last year. I'm really interested to see what this is guy's like. Um, Stokey Santa had great things to say today in it. Teased us with some pitches on the phones um, and then proceeded to tell us it wasn't in yet. Is, is, this, <laughs> is this a new company that came out with this car? Is this it's company? relatively new, yeah. Have you ever smoked yeah. the Four Kicks before? Uh, I might have. I can't remember. I, can't, I don't recall, mm. but... It's so, yeah, game. the Four Kicks was released last year. Um, this is their new blend. Um, I believe it was named after the recording studio 
that many, many classic rock bands have recorded, including Led Zeppelin, Headley Grange, but don't quote me on that. Uh, I believe that's where they came came up with the name. So yeah, I was wondering the etymology of that name. It, it sounded very, very different. But very yeah, different. don't. I want to say it was Led Zeppelin Four that was recorded there, the one with Black Dog. Right. On the, so. Um, Quite a few bands back in the day recorded there, though. Now, speaking of uh, kind of boutique blends, uh, uh, bland, brand, brands or blends? <laughs> if you put those two words together, you get bland. <laughs> brands. <laughs> brands. Uh, Elogio is one that we all liked, and one that actually I was thinking I needed to order some more of them because I uh, I did enjoy that smoke, and I want to I want to go back and revisit. Uh, but they've got a new blend coming out. Uh, Eccentrico by Elogio, which they debuted at IPCPR, and uh, has a almost Opus X like uh, little fan type thing. Um, it's almost it's like a pigtail, but it's shaggy um, at the at the head of the cigar. So. Now, I don't have the size in front of me, but that's a good size cigar. I thought it was uh, like, seven by fifty four. Yeah, that's cigar it, yeah. cigar coop is telling me. Wow. And I believe they're using some different tobacco on that too. Uh, let's see, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper and binder, and yep. the filler, uh, Nicaraguan Esteli, Viso uh, Ometepe, and Viso Jalapa and Dominican. I thought you weren't prepared, dude. Uh, I'm just reading from cigar-coop.com. <laughs> Big props to them. Uh, they were one of the websites I thought they did, uh, and we should probably mention that. I think that of all the websites that did IPCPR-related media postings, I thought Cigar Coops was the best. I thought it was the most complete. They talked about a lot of different cigars and gave you great information. And, you know, they cut right to the chase, so you don't have to watch a video. Uh, you know, you don't have to uh, even listen to a podcast, right? You can just go right to their site, and it's cigar it preview. Short. Bam, bam, bam. Here they are. Here's a picture. Here's the blend profile. Here's a paragraph about it, and here's the sizes it's going to come in, and that's the kind of information you want. So I thought their coverage was the best. I agree, man. It was short and sweet, man. You read one of their posts, you're done in two minutes, you know exactly what's coming. Mm. So I agree 100%. Quesada, Jalapa. What about that one? Yeah, that's one uh, Mark Jr. was all excited about. Yeah. And now, but that's the, the <clears throat> so they saw what the Espana did in the market, right? And that's the kind of answer to that? Yep. So basically, it's the U.S. release of the Espana with a different wrapper. Um, from what I understand, it's it's limited to 100 boxes of each size. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 10 cigars per box. So I got a feeling this one is going to be hard to find, but if you find it, buy it. Um, going back to our discussion last week, Ben, on limited releases, right. I think this one might be a winner. Um, is this a first release or a second release? So this is a new blend of the original Espana. Okay. Um, which was a huge hit. Um, they very limited release in the U.S. last year. Um, yeah. We've talked about it before. Um, right. Based on what Stogie Santa said, based on what I've read elsewhere, um, I want to get my hands on the cigar. Um, and based on my experience with the Espana, we all love the Espana. I, I don't think yeah. anybody would disagree. Mm. It was a great smoke. I think this one, by the sounds of it, has a little bit more power, a little bit more flavor. Um, we'll see what it does. Some great sizes there, too. Um, small ring gauges. Can't wait for this one to land. I'll be, I'll be. Sounds I'm like sorry. sounds like a winner. Sounds sounds like a, uh, a good trade investment. Yep, I'll, I'll be hounding Stogie Santa for the next three weeks until they come in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, La Aurora ex has come out with a, an extension to their Preferidos line called the Diamond. Yeah, so I this saw is that, dude. yeah, it's a gold, platinum, uh, ruby, sapphire, emerald, and now a diamond. And this is going to be a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, a Dominican Maduro binder, and a Dominican filler. And it'll come in one size that uh, Preferido uh, size that all of those special ones that come in the tubes come in, and that's uh, the five by fifty four double figurado. And that's going to be a black tube, from what I understand, correct? Yeah, it looks uh, black in color with a very high sheen on it from the picture. So it's very shiny. Unfortunately, I don't have an MSRP on them, but based on my previous experience, they are um, high in price. Yeah, they're at least $14 a stick. But you usually can find them 
for less money um mm. Mm. given some patience so we'll see what happens i want to try it i'm looking forward to it yeah i definitely uh, want to try one to see how it compares to the other things in the preferito line uh which are all pretty good yeah i think aurora in general is just a very solid product solid they, smokes, they usually yeah. don't come out with a lot of duds yeah i agree now did you hear about the the other allow or release this year no i have not the urban legend, the Cian Anos broadleaf. Oh yeah, they were yeah. Gonna, so they're bringing back Cian Anos, but they're putting a broadleaf. So supposedly, and this has been an urban legend for a long time. I've read some posts going back to '08 talking about this. Basically, the Cian Anos blend with a broadleaf wrapper on it. If that happens, if it's true, from what I've read, it is true this year. I cannot wait to get my hands on that smoke. Uh, I love that smoke. I cannot even imagine what it's going to be like with a broadleaf on it. So keep an eye out. From what I've read, it's going to be very, very limited. But, um, you know, those who have patience and uh, the fortitude to seek out, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. Got kind of a special treat for our video viewers. Uh, I was handed uh, a new release from La Flor Dominicana. Okay. Okay. Uh, for the camera here. This is the Lafleur Dominicana Oro. Uh, and I'm now I'm reading from halfwheel.com who has a picture of them. My I didn't get a tube with mine. I just got mine in the uh, in the regular cellophane. Um, but he said uh, there's a gold tube and a new blend, the natural and Maduro. I would say this I'm holding up for camera is a Maduro. Um, According to Lido, and I quote, these cigars are amped up Colorado blend with dark Nicaraguan wrappers and Dominican fillers in binders from the La Canela Dominican Republic. Sounds tasty. So this is a, a new one from uh, LFD, which uh, I have not smoked yet, but I have two of them to, uh, to smoke, and uh, we'll tell you about them and review them on the show. Is that man in the chat room says there's no vacation for you? You're a podcasting mogul now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no escaping it. No offense, that man, but he's done what? What is it? Three hundred episodes of Paul.com. Yes, Paul? yes. It will be. Uh, you've been a podcasting dude for a long time, so we've. Uh, we're uh, well. Actually, we're going to do. Uh, do oh, glad you mentioned that because. Uh, we will probably do one more Stogie Geeks, and then after that, we'll do a show on the 31st. So August 31st will be Stogie Geeks 28. Stogie Geeks 28 will be recorded during the middle of the day on Friday from 12 to 1, roughly. And uh, it'll be streamed live in the same, uh, same, same channel. And we will uh, we'll all be doing a show, and we will be doing it in support of breast cancer research. So uh, please do check out that show, as it's That's, certain uh, to be... Paul.com 300th episode. Yeah, so that will be during, uh, in the middle of the Paul.com Security Weekly's 300th episode, we will be doing Stogie Geeks uh, 28 uh, during Excellent. that uh, show. So. Look forward to that, man. Yes. So it's going to be fun. So please tune in on August 31st at noontime. So the last one on my list, um, I'm curious to get you guys' take on this, is the Papas Fritas from Drew Estate. Yeah, what is that? I've heard rumblings. French fries. So it's the short filler from the number nine, Liga Pravada. And they're basically making a Cuban sandwich out of it and mm -hmm. selling it for 6 to $7 price range. Oh, very interesting. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings for it. it. You know what? Certainly I'm going to be picking up a, a 10 or 3 of these um, for $20 and change. Mm. How can you not? Right. Um, $6 and change for a short filler? What do you guys think? I mean... Yeah, that's... It's not out of the realm of possibility from, le like, you look at the Dirty Rat, that's 13 bucks. You look at some yep. of their other products. So I wouldn't say that they're asking something. They're not asking for more than what they usually do, but in general, I think sometimes their their prices are a little high. So for, for a regular short filler, I would say that that is pretty high, but for a short filler for Liga Pravada, yeah. that seems to be same in, in, in their same, um, uh, essentially, scale. Uh, pricing cigars, so something to look at. For what I originally read, too, um, for people who have smoked it, said that you would not know a short filler by smoking it um, if they had not told you. So, if what I understand, same great flavors as Liga Provada number nine at half the price. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be checking it out. Yeah, so. I, I would definitely try a couple. Yeah. yeah. I think construction tells a lot when it comes to short fillers. Like the ash, usually is is, is you you can differentiate the ash with 
a short filler to a long filler, but we'll see. The amount of tobacco in your teeth, too, is another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Uh, that was pretty much all I had. I have one. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I had saw uh, I, uh, um, I'm friends with uh, on on the internet on Facebook with uh, Ben from Nice Tight Ash, mm-hmm. and I had saw a, a, a pretty interesting picture of a of scar that he had got from IPCPR. Um, I I don't know if it was released then, but it's I think it's new. It's called the Gurkha Ghost. Okay, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, and I would say that I I wouldn't probably get it at the local store. I'd probably try to find a deal on it on, in the inter, on the internet at some point. But that'd be a cigar that I'd be interested in in, in checking out, just because it looked like it had really good construction from the picture. And I don't, I don't think uh, Ben from Nice Side Ash puts you know every single picture that uh, of every single cigar that he's ever smoked on on the website or o- online. So. I would say that uh, he, he he had had a favorable put it in a favorable light, so it'd be something that I'd look at because I've had some good luck with Gurkhas lately. Cool, excellent. Well, I think that uh, that rounds out the show. Um, I apologize; the second segment was kind of short. Again, we had a couple of guests that uh, fell victim to illness, so. We'll be starting to get updates from Please them. Please send all your hate mail to Paul Joyle at yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. And uh, as always, don't forget to support your CRA. Uh, become a member if you care about uh, being able to smoke fine premium cigars. Join the CRA and support the cause as there's people that uh, essentially want to take that right away from us. So, Tim, do you have any other announcements? No, I just want to thanks thanks to the guys in the live chat, man, for supporting us. Um, we appreciate you listening um, and being interactive. And um, peace. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care.